thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. And in this of our learning, we should have the base Megdash immediately. We're going to start on Vava Medalef on the bottom. That's 6a. And it's three lines from the bottom. Rav Hanan Mishtoi. Rav Hanan said over, he shared the following. Rav Kana, Isi Gita. Rav Kana brought a get. Which Rav Kana is this? It's a little bit unclear. It was the Rav Kana that's a student of Rav, which that's probably what we're talking about. However, there's another version to this Gemara. It may be a student of Rava, which means it's a different one. According to uh, some of the Talmudic historians, there were six Rav Kanas. We know for sure there were two. But um, anyway, Rav Kana Isigit, Rav Kana brought a get. I don't know, Rav Kana is saying, I don't know if it was going from Surah to Nardai, that's from the south to the north. You mean Nardai Lasura from the north to the south? All of this is in, uh, in Bavel, in Babylonia. Asalakami de Rav. It comes in front of Rav, and the other version here is that it's Rava. Amale and Rav Kana says to him, uh, Do I, am I required to say I'm, I'm in Bavel, I'm going from one place to another. He says, you don't have to. And if you do, uh, it's helpful. It's going to work. You don't have to, but if you do, it's, a, it's like a good idea. It's going to work. What does it mean if you do, it's going to work? He says, The reason why this would be helpful is because you can get rid of any potential um, uh, the husband contesting the validity of the get by getting it done right now by saying that it was written and signed in front of me. Um, yeah, so it could be Rava, and it also could be Rav because we're referring to very good. Hill is pointing out a, a good point. Um, we said that there's different versions to the text would be Rava, then Rava's whole concern was only about validating the signatures. So it fits with Rava. Um, what if it's about, what if it's, um, uh, what about the doing it Lishma? It should be done for the right purpose. So maybe in Bavel they had it Lishma anyway, maybe that wasn't a concern. So, and if it's Rav, then Rav said Bavel is like Eretz Yisrael, so you don't have that concern either. So it could fit with either one. I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't learning this Gemara that maybe had to do with their opinions, the different texts. I just thought that the word Rav and the word Rava would be confused often because you know you could lose the last letter in shorthand. Well, okay. It means if the husband's gonna come later and contest to a get, good morning, contest to a get that the um, that the Shliach had already said the funny nichta, the funny nichta, and we say the, the get's already the get's valid. We don't, we're not going to listen to any uh, any of your contesting, any challenging to the validity of it. Kidatanya, as it was taught in a brisa, on top of Vava Medbez. Maisa Badamechad. The story of a person, Shevi Get Lefne Rabbi Shmal, that, um, by the way, uh, Yaakov is here. In case uh, Dr. Stein, you were wondering if he's going to show up. Uh, Dr. Stein is on. Who? Dr. Stein is on the. Uh, there. There's a car over here. Uh, oh, okay. So there's a story of a person, Shavi Get, with near Rabbi Shmuel, that brought a get in front of Rabbi Shmuel. Amar Lai, he says to Rabbi Shmuel, Tarach ani laimer b'fani nechta b'fani nechta ma'yeni tarach. Am I required to say b'fani nechta b'fani nechta? Do I have to say it? Well, on Malai, he says to him, Bini Mehechanata. He says, My son, Rabbi Shmuel tells this person, Where are you from? He says, Amalai Rabbi, he says, Rabbi Mikfar Sisoy, and I'm from the village of Sisoy. Where's our shaykh going? Where's our shaykh going? Oh, yeah, he's staying here Thursday. He says, I'm, I come from the village of Sisoy. 
I still have no clue what the bill is. The last one, this one, uh, and it shows up like it's wild. Whenever it will be over. So, Amar La, you see, says Tzarechat Leim Bafani Nechta Bafani Nechtam. You are obligated to say Bafani Nechta Bafani Nechtam. It sounds like this is a place in Israel. Uh, he's obligated to say it was written and signed in front of me. You, you actually have a map there. Uh, sorry, very good. Okay, yeah, that's based on what the Gemara is about to tell us. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, he adds in the words like this. He says, so that you should not need witnesses later. You should not need witnesses later. In other words, say that it was written sign in front of me, so nothing, no problems will come out later. You'll not, later on, you won't need to find witnesses. You can get away with it with just this person, just the messenger saying that it's valid. After this fellow leaves the presence of Rabbi Yishmael, uh, the Rabbi Loi enters. Who's Rabbi Loi? Yeah. Yeah, we're about to see. Um, Rabbi Loi is Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Loi's father. Do they say who Rabbi Loi is in there? Let me take a look at this note right here. Rabbi Loi was a third generation. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look, uh, I'm not sure if it's from either Rabbi Lai's father. Uh -huh. Maybe it is, maybe it is. I think uh, back to this time, they said like my son and all this. Uh -huh. You wouldn't hold the elevator for I, me? I push the one button so it won't come to get you. I push the two arrows. It is a common expression. Yeah, it is. It shows an affection. Okay. So, um, Rabbi walks into Rabbi Shmal into after this fellow leaves. Amaloi says, Rabbi. Says, what are you saying? He has to say, Farsi say is Israel proper. It's more proper even than Akko. And Utanan, and we have a, a Mishnah that says, our Mishnah. No one holds that Farsi say you would be obligated to make the declaration of the get was written and signed in front of me. Where do you come up with this Chumrah? Where you have to say this, this is Israel proper. When do you have to make that declaration? Only if you're coming from overseas, or if you're coming from excluding, outside of Israel, excluding, from, excluding Baba, or if you're coming from uh, cities that are outside of Israel, possibly, you know, even if they're close or even if they're absorbed in the, within the boundaries. But this is Israel proper. No one holds that you have to say it. A Malai. So Rabbi Shmal says to him, Stoik Benish Stoik. Be quiet, my son. Be quiet. Still <laughs> Be quiet. Be quiet. He says, once the matter has left and it, it created a leniency, so it's out. The matter is out. What does it mean it's a leniency? Leniency is that even though you're requiring to say but what you're also doing is you're saying that if he says it, you're not going to ever have a problem with this get later. So it's just like getting it certified now that you won't have any trouble later. So he's saying that what saying works even when it's not required. That's what he's okay. Comes out that it's a leniency. He's saying it's a leniency because it's going to work to protect the get from anything that's going to happen later. So and it seems like the process is true. Right. The Gemara says, why was Rabbi Loi concerned about this? Rabbi Yishmael says, hey, you know, mish, like, zakik, leidim, come, like. Rabbi Yishmael, when he told the person that you should say, he told him, you should do this so that later on you won't have any issues. It was clear that he wasn't requiring him to say. It was the question on Rabbi Yishmael from Rabbi Loi was, why are you requiring to say, 
it's Israel proper. Israel proper doesn't doesn't require. It. And then Rabbi Shmuel answers, no, it's a it's a leniency, it's a leniency. So nothing else will will happen later. But the Gemara now, is now says, why do you even have the question? It says, well, Rabbi Loi wasn't told the end of the statement of Rabbi Shmuel. I guess Rabbi Loi was outside. Probably the guy who leaves Rabbi Shmuel's presence and he says, uh, what did the master say? Did the Rabbi Shmuel said that I should say, be funny enough, funny enough. He says, really? And they ran in and they said, why did you say that? And he didn't finish the, the statement. What he really said was that it's better for you to say, funny enough, funny enough. It was written inside in front of me so that later on you don't have trouble. But they, they didn't tell that over. Okay. Sholach lei Rav Yasser l'Rav Chizda. Rav Yasser says to Rav Chizda, sends him a message. Sends him uh, a halacha. I don't know if we have Rav Yasser often. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't remember him from other places, although he does get a lot of attention over here. But um, it goes like this. Yeah, it's a name, it's a, the Sfarim used to name, Eviatar. Uh, everyone wants to help out to save the marriage. So, Shalach Lei Rev Ev Yasser of Chiz, the Gitna Boy Misham Lakan. Any get that comes from Bavel to Eretz Yisrael, Misham means from there. From, he's sending this message to Rav Chizda. Any, any get that comes from you, from Rav Chizda's area, Lakan to over here, to Rav Yasser's area, which is in Eretz Yisrael, you don't need to say basically Bavel is fine does not require and that's Rebbe Vyasser's statement to Rav let us say he holds the Bishem B'Kiyan Lishma he must be held like Rabba Rabba's concern was that maybe outside of Israel they weren't experts but Bavel they were experts in Lishma so we're not worried about Bavel that's probably what Rebbe Vyasser holds but in Babel they were learned. Gemara says, "V'tizbara, could that be the pshat? It can't be the pshat, because Rabba is the Rava. Rabba, even if you hold that the issue is the lishma, but Rabba also holds that it has to that you have to be able to validate the signatures, which you're not going to be able to. Rabba agrees to that. We proved it from the Mishnah, where it says even from one district to another district in Israel." Uh, yeah, you had to say which over there there was never a concern of lishma, but there was a concern of validating signatures. Rabba has to hold of Rabba. Ella, rather the Kuliyama bin Lakami, everyone agrees that you need to validate the signatures. Even the Karabim, the Salki Venachdi, since there are many people, Salki means that go up, which going up means they go from Babel to Eretz Yisrael. Venachdi, and they go down, they go from Eretz Yisrael to Babel. Mishkach Shrichi. Going to be common to find people that are traveling. It's like uh, nowadays, Crown Heights. There's always people coming, uh, in, at least in the yeshiva. Someone in Crown Heights says, uh, uh, Anyone coming to Crown Heights? I need something in my. Uh, it's like in a matter of a week, there's, uh, you know, you have someone going. So. There, Ravdimi would travel, Ula, Ravin. Okay. Depends who you ask. <laughs> I'm a Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef challenges this. He says, "Man leimalam the Rav of Yosef bar Samchul." He told me over Allah in the name of Rav of Yosef. How do you know he's reliable? It's a funny question in the Gemara. Everyone mentioned the Gemara is reliable. Rav Yosef says, "How do you know he's reliable?" Um, and I'll even tell you, there's even a problem with him. He says that you, the Shalach Leila Rabbi Yehuda, he sent a message to Rabbi Yehuda. Now he's sending a message to Rav Chizda. He sent a message also to Rabbi Yehuda that says, Bnei Adam Ha'ilam Misham Lakan. He told him uh, uh, that people that come from Bavel to Eretz Yisrael, you know, to come to learn, in Kimabatsum, they're fulfilling in themselves, that that they don't care about their children. They don't care about their family. They give the child to, to, to a prostitute and the girl, they sell for wine and they drink it. In other words, they're neglecting their families. It's not a good thing. 
or maybe it's a very good thing um, that they, it's showing there. There's two ways of looking at this, what he's trying to say. Either they're trying to say how much they care about learning Torah, that they're willing to neglect their families, or he's saying that what they're doing is not good. They should not be neglecting their families and just leaving Bavel and coming to Israel just to learn Torah. So he's saying Bavel is like a, more or less a rough place? No, he's not saying Bavel is a rough place. He's saying that the people that have families in Bavel, that they come to Israel just to, to go to Kailo, mm -hmm. He was saying that they're neglecting their families. How are they going to oh, survive wow. over this? They're going to have to sell themselves as, uh, as slaves or something. Or... There is a comment. Someone, I don't know where it was, but there is a comment that said maybe that was what he meant was that, that even though this was such a big sacrifice, but they did it just to study Torah. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's that they deserted their wives. They deserted their wives. It looks like a negative thing. Yeah. Okay. And so what's the problem? What's Rabbi Yosef saying? He sent him this message because of Lebele Sirtan. The problem is, is that he sent him the message and on the letter that he sent it, he did not put Sirtan. Sirtan is the way they would score the, uh, the, the paper, the, 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 the lines on the paper. On the Sefer Torah, if you look at the Sefer Torah, you can see the scratch, the, the scored line. They, they don't make a line like a like a notebook line. They make it with just a with like a scratch. Be able to write beautifully. Very good. I think what Dr. Stein is asking is that Rabbi Yosef was blind. How did he know that there weren't any lines there? Rabbi Yosef, we know, was blind. Yeah. He's the one that's complaining about Rabbi Yosef. So how do you know Rabbi Yosef is reliable? He even sent a letter and he didn't put the, uh, you know, he, I, he saw a meeting in a restaurant without a good hefsher. You know, he sent a letter without uh, putting lines on the paper. You know, well, maybe he meant he needs lines. I don't need lines because I can't see them. Yeah, yeah, but you're, I, I thought you were asking that. How does he know if there's lines there? I can't see it. Okay. So, either way, why, it's why Braille. Braille. It was Braille. He, the lines he could feel. Very good. <laughs> uh, apparently you're not supposed to we're going to say in a second let's yeah, uh, no, say the next thing what was that uh someone like they gave him matzah teeth and he goes like this he says who wrote this <laughs> <laughs> is rabbi yosef blind all his life uh i'm not sure probably not maybe this is when he was younger yeah yeah you heard uh, what i'm saying that maybe yeah. he became blind later. I don't know. It's a I good just point. You two it's a good what? point. Very good point. I'm Rabbi Yitzchak, and Rabbi Yitzchak says he continues. Rabbi Yosef is continue, continuing the problem. Shtayim, if you're writing two words, kaisvin, you're allowed to write it without sirtet. Shalosh, but three words, ain't kaisvin. You can't write without sirtet. Masnisatana and Abraisa was taught. Shalosh kaisvin, Arben kaisvin. You can't write four words without sirtet. Three, yes, but not four. I'm talking about writing words of a pasuk. Uh, without uh, without sirtet, so okay, that's a buyer's um, that's a buyer's uh, comment. I'm sorry, that's Rabbi Yosef's comment on uh, on on Rav Yosef that maybe he's not reliable. A Malaya Baya, so Abaya says to Rav Yosef, also called Layot. Abaya is the student of Rav Yosef. There's always uh, there's always a conversation whenever Rav Yosef is here. There's always uh, Abaya shows up. Says, because he doesn't know one thing, he doesn't know what Rabbi Yitzchak says, he's not a great person. When it comes to something that's a matter of logic, I get what you're saying. He said something that was illogical, maybe he's not a great person, he can't think right. But this is just the teaching. No one told it to him. No one told him that Allah is so not a great person. Yeah. In, uh, in Kailo, they were uh, you would learn halacha. That was, and um, he wanted to get like as much information as possible. Remember, uh, Rabbi Heller was saying you don't need Rabbi Heller was Rish Kailo. He says you don't need uh, to know every single achran, all the chuvas from everywhere. You have to learn the Gemara. You have to learn the tour, You learn the Shulchan Every achan, you're never going to learn every achan. You don't have to know every everything. You have to have the basic 
foundation and you didn't hear one thing okay so but you understood based on all the background that's good enough so um here abaya is saying uh, Rabbi Yasser didn't know what Rabbi Yitzchuk said. Okay, so he didn't know what Rabbi Yitzchuk said. It was a teaching that he, he didn't get to that. But that doesn't mean he's not a great person. He's a, still a great person. He didn't know. Uh, he, he just wasn't up to, he didn't do that safer yet. <clears throat> Rabbi Yitzchuk is a, um, is usually an Amaira in Eretz Is Is he under Rabbi Yechanan? So many people in the world. Rav Yasser is an Amaira, and he's writing to Rav Chizda. This is second, third generation Amiraim in Babel. So there would be like Rav is first generation, Rav Huna is second generation, Rav Chizda is third generation, second, third generation. Uh, he's sent to Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda is a second generation. So he's, he's in between second and third generation. And um, he has these two conversations, one with Rav Chizda, one with Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Yosef is complaining that his conversation with Rabbi Yehuda wasn't such a good conversation. He didn't put sirtet on the document, so you can't rely on him. Abayah says because he didn't know that they need sirtet for uh, for this. Okay, if Oid Abayah continues, he says you're complaining that Rabbi Yosef did that. Let me just tell you one more thing. It says Oid, her Rabbi Yosef to ask him Mari al yade. You should know that the Eibushter agrees with Rabbi Yosef. Mari is the master. Hashem. Hashem agrees to Rabbi Yosef. The Ksiv. Because it says in the Pasuk, but tis of Pilakshay, that the concubine uh, was either not faithful or she, or she uh, rebelled against him. The Gemara is not learning over here that she wasn't faithful. The Pasuk says, but tisna. Sounds like she had znas. <coughs> what happened with the story over here is this is called uh, Pilagish Begiva. Familiar with the story? It's at the end of the book of uh, Shaiftim. Comes in, it's a wild story. Over there it says that there's a guy. Uh, from Levi, I think, from the tribe of Levi, that he has a concubine. The concubine uh, uh, rebels against him. She goes back to her father's house in, uh, I forget where. And um, after several months, the person goes to get her back. So he goes to the father-in-law. The father-in-law is all excited. And he says him to stay, he invites him in, and he tries to leave. He says, stay another day. So he wants to try to stay another day. He's there for a bunch of days. Finally says, okay, that's it, I'm going. And he takes his things, he goes, and he comes to this area near the Yavusi. They don't have where to sleep. He says, let's go to the Yavusi to sleep. He said, no, we can't go to the Yavusi. We're going to go to Giva. Giva was the area in Binyamin. Sorry? Yeah. He's with the concubine. He's with his, with his uh, concubine. Anyway, no one invites him in. Finally, an old man invites him in. And um, the people from Giva come to the house. They knock on the door. They said, send out your guest. You want to uh, have relations with him. He says, no, I have a daughter and I have the concubine. I'll give them to you, but the man don't touch. He puts out the, the concubine. It's a wild story. Sounds, sounds, sounds like, like light. Looks. Exactly. It sounds exactly like light. And he puts out the concubine. <clears throat> and the, more, the man uh, like, raped her. And then uh, in the morning, he, uh, he tries to wake her up. She's at the doorstep. She makes her way back. So the, tries to wake her up. She's dead. Puts her on the, on the animal. He goes back home cuts the body up into 12 pieces. He sends it to all the tribes. He says, look at what the people of Binyamin did. After that, there's this huge battle. They go to battle they, they, and they fight wars against Binyamin, against the tribe of Binyamin. And ultimately at the end, after they lose two battles, I think the third battle, they basically wipe out the tribe of Binyamin. And they weren't allowed to marry people. Whoever was remaining from Binyamin wasn't allowed to get married. They had to go snatch wives. And it was, it was complicated, that's right, Tishabov. One of the uh, and tuba of one of the things by tuba was because Binyamin was allowed to then get married. There's so it says what is of the the Pilagesh, the concubine left. She uh, she rebelled. She went back to her father. Why did she leave? Well, apparently the husband was angry at her, and so she just ran away. Why was he angry? It says he found the fly. I'm not, I'm not giving any details over here because the Gemara is going to explain. I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to keep you in suspense. Found a, a, a fly. Rabbi Yenison Nima Matzla. Rabbi Yenison says he found the hair. Rabbi Yasser found Elio and Navi. You know, Elio uh, Navi appears often in the, in the Gemara. He's talking to this age, to that age. 
Yerushua ben Levi, we have famous stories. Rabbi Yasser finds Elio. Amalei, my covenant of Kaddish Baruch, he says, what's Hashem doing right now? Amalei, he says, the Yasek be Pelegish Begiva. He says, he's uh, busy learning Pelegish Begiva. This, uh, this um, what is this, chapter 19 of uh, the book of Shaftim. My Amar, he says, what's Hashem saying about the Pelegish Begiva? Amalei, uh, Elio, and he says, Rabbi Yasser ben Ikach Hashem is saying that my son of Yasser learns the story of Plegish Begiva that it was about a fly. Yainasan Bini, Yainasan, my son, that's Rab Yainasan, Kachawai, may you learn that it was about a hair, that the bite she leave because it was a hair. A Malay says, Chas Vishalom, Yikas Feka Kamishmaya, the Ebishter doesn't know what the story was. A Malay, Elav 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 He says, you know what, you're both right. How could they both be right? You're also right. It says, goes like this. There was actually a fly, but he didn't mind the fly. There was a, um, a hair, and that he minded. Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda explains what's going on over here. He didn't give any explanation. The fly was in the food, but Nima Baisimakan, the hair was in her private area. She was usually they would shave that uh, the private area. She didn't shave, and there was a hair there. Now. What's the problem? The fly in the food, that's disgusting. He says, who put this here? There's a fly in the food. Uh, so the woman, the concubine got scared. Nima right? Sakanta, but he got really angry because of the hair that she had, because uh, the hair was dangerous. Apparently it could cut his uh, organ and could make him a prashafa, make him uh, sterile, uh, in, in, infertile. Right? Ikadamri, those that say Yidivi the Bikara, both of them were in the plate. We're not talking about the private area at all. That's uh, that's not what we're discussing here. We're talking about that there was a fly in the soup or there was a hair in the soup, right? Zvuv Ainsa, the fly that flew in, that was a mistake while she was walking. By accident, you can't, can't stop that uh, the fly from flying in. But Nima, the hair, Pshiyusa, that is negligence. How did the hair get in there? Uh, she didn't put on those things that the bakers wear or whatever. How would you know where the folks on the spot? You know, like if you take swimming or the straw. Or the straw. Okay. Perhaps she'll die, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, that goes together with the oh Shrek, it's up to my neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amr of Chista. Rav Chista says, Laila, okay, so whatever the case is, Abaya comment about Rav of Yasser is that um, is that he's obviously a great person. Hashem um, mentions him in uh, discussing what the story was. Hashem mentions Rav of Yasser. You can't say that because he wrote without Sirta that you just uh, throw him under the bus. Right? Right, right. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't uh, learn that. He didn't, and it was never told him. Okay. I'm Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda says, "Loyla mal yatol adam eima yisair b'tech beisei." Person should never put too much fear inside his house. Sarei, because pelegish begiva hitol ala ala baile eima yisaira. The husband was going to be this very strict type of husband. And everything was with a lot of fear. He got angry a lot, and he was like, uh, you didn't want to mess, you know. Uh-oh. So the Apila Kamar Vavis Mishal, look at what happened. Because of that, it was a battle. And thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people died because this husband got, uh, didn't con control himself, or uh, he was, had too much, uh, too much strictness in the house. The same concept, you know, about not, you know, about warning Right, we had a discussion over there. Was it a good thing to warn her? Was it a bad thing? Where was it coming from? Yeah, someone was just telling me about uh, keeping the children at the Shabbos table. How long, you know, he said, my family, children have to stay <coughs> at the table. And this. And my family, the children stay at the table until I say, okay, that's enough grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then they, they like scatter. Okay, no more grape juice. Uh, okay. 
Um, I'm Rav Yudha Marav. Rav Yudha says the name of Rav. Rav Yudha is a student of Rav. Um, I have a uh, comment on the side that Rav isn't there in one of the manuscripts. He commented here. Ksav Yad Minchen, in the Munich manuscript. It doesn't say Rav. It says, Kalamat Lemi Yaser Say anyone that puts too much fear into his house, and then he's going to come to three sins. Um, what are the three sins? He's going to come to, to Gilead Arias. Rashi explains what's going to happen is the wife is going to come back. The, the, she wasn't able to go to the mikveh or something, and she's going to be afraid to tell her husband that she didn't go. And she's just going to say, I went. She's afraid of his uh, wrath. So he's going to end up uh, living with her. And it wasn't, uh, but he, he, he caused her to, to have such fear that she, she, she lies about it. Like over here, what happened over here was that um, the, the whole Binyamin story, or um, if she could run away, the wife could run away and she could get hurt as she's running away. She could fall somewhere in a bridge or a ditch. In Phil Shabbos, also could be Phil Shabbos. What, what's going to happen? The husband's going to get upset. You didn't light the candles. You didn't put on the chalent. You didn't do this. You're going to end up lighting it on Shabbos because they're afraid of the husband's wrath. Yeah, I should tell you, there's a, um, a, a wonderful book. Too much already. It's called Ru Ruth, Dr. Yael. Um, no. Yeah, exactly. L. Reichler, I think. Reichler. Anyway, um, it's a nice, nice big book. But um, in there, she compares the story of Light, the story of Pelagish Kiva, the story of Rus. Basically, and it's it's a lot. It's four hundred pages at least, but um, um, it's an amazing study. But in there, she says basically that. In Shaif, the book of Shaiftim is, is um, making the, the, the people like, like this woman, she was just an object. We don't even know her name. She says there's no name to this woman that this whole battle came about. There's no, there's no name. She was just the concubine. The concubine. And she compares it to Boyaz when the, the rectification of that is when Rus comes to Boyaz in the middle of the night, and she uh, uncovers his feet. And Bayez wakes up and he says, Mia, tell me about you. You know, who are you? Which is exactly the opposite of the book of Shaiftim, where the, over there in Shaiftim, every this woman is nameless. And in uh, Rus, everyone becomes like uh, you know, the opposite of that. It's a beautiful, beautiful essay. Okay. Just in time for Shavuos, right? So Rus. So if you look at it like this, what's happening is that the um, the, uh, the the time period that they're going through is like Nago covers up with that. They didn't respect each other, and you know. And then we we read the book of Rus, which is exactly the opposite of that. But you see the ultimate respect that he has for, for Rus, like the rectification of the Midas is coming to. It. Okay, I'm a Rabbi Barbarchana. That was my addition to that. Rabbi Barbachana says, Hadamir Rabbana, and this that the rabbi said, Shlesha Dvarim Tarachadam Lam Bateh Pesa. We have a Mishnah in Shabbos that it says a person in Arab Shabbos should say um, uh, three things on, on Arab Shabbos. He should say to his household, to his wife, to his family, Im Chashecha, before it gets dark. He says, Isartem, did you take the Meiser yet? In other words, will we, we be able to eat the food? You have to take Meiser before we can eat it. They robbed him. Did you make an Arab Chatzir? We would like to be able to carry outside. You know, in the courtyard, if there's other houses there, other families, we have to join together food to be able to carry. Hadliku esaner, and light the candle. So all of that, tzarech l'memrinu b'nechusi, you have to say it softly. You can't say it in, uh, with uh, anger. Or... So that they should listen to you. They should uh, accept it. Am Ravashi, Ravashi says, I did not hear what Rabbi Barbachana said. The camp to Misvara, but I did it anyway. Uh, that is, that you're not supposed to do, have, you know, all these things that are midday stavis, you know, good character. You're not supposed to do it because it says it in Shulchan Aruch. Because someone told me, you know, uh, what the, the Bachan that went on Merkish, so they said, um, 
before they left someone's house, they said, Rabbi, Rabbi Chadakov said we should say thank you. <laughs> no, it's not how you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to say, someone told me I should, I should say thank you. To say thank you, because so Rabbi Barbar, who is the say, uh, Ravashi says, I didn't hear what Rabbi Rahana says, uh, but uh, you're supposed to do it, even if I did hear, you're supposed to do it uh, um, just because that's what you're supposed to do. Amar Abavo. Abavo says, Leila mal yatama adam, eme yaser betech beisai, a person should never put too much fear in his house. Jadam gadol hit leme yaser betech beisai, there was a person that did this, bechilu davar gadol, and they fed him a big thing. It sounds like a big prohibition. Umanu, and who is that? Rabbi Hanina ben Gamliel, that's Rabbi Hanina ben Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel's son. Rabbi Hanina. Nina ben Gamliel. Gemara says, Yechilu sal kadaitach, they fed him something, treif. Hashta, how could that be? Behemtim shel tzadikim. When it comes to an animal of a tzadik, ain't a kadosh baruch hamevi takalal yadam, Hashem doesn't let him sin, even an animal won't sin. Tzadikim atzim lekoshkin. Gemara's referencing when, um, when uh, Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair sold his donkey. So, the, uh, the, the purchaser of the donkey complained that it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't, oh no, it was this, uh, this wasn't Repinchus Pinyar. Yeah, maybe it was Repinchus, what was this? Um, I don't remember if it was, but I think it was Repinchus Pinyar. It was Repinchus Pinyar, the donkey wouldn't work on, on Shabbos. Then there was someone else, they stole a donkey. Maybe they stole a donkey and they, they the donkey wouldn't eat. And so um, they just, they gave it back. What does it say over there? Is it Repinchus Pinyar or who? Oh, they placed untied food in front of the donkey where Pinchas Pinyar refused to eat until the food was tied. Was tied. I don't remember if that was he sold it or if they uh, or if they stole it. Either way, the, the, the animal wouldn't eat non-kosher food. This is if an animal won't eat non-kosher food. So you think uh, a tzaddik is not going to eat is is, is not going to recognize that the food isn't kosher? It's um, Taisus' opinion here is that all of these things are only to do with food. That the that, that tzaddik is protected. From um, from consuming uh, something that's not kosher that has to do with food, other mistakes it is possible that could come to a tzaddik, it. but not he's not going to end up eating non kosher. So how could it be that they fed him non kosher? The Gemara says Ella they almost they wanted to, they wanted to feed him non kosher. My Neil, what were they going to feed him? Aver menachai. Apparently they lost a piece of the meat. They were just going to pull off another piece from somewhere and just feed it to him. Okay, Shalach Lei Marukva Le Rebbe Lazar. Marukva sends a message to Rebbe Lazar. Mar Sorry? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the answer. I was thinking about that. Yaakov is asking a good question. It says, uh, it's talking negative about Rebbe Chanina Ben Gamliel. It's saying that he got angry because they were afraid of his anger. They uh, almost fed him trade. And uh, it sounds like Lashon Hara. Yeah, but you can do this to teach a lesson like the Tina Fala and the child that you take the children to take uh, the right. children is right. When there's uh, for the person that's uh, pedophile and you might say it in a different uh, message to people to keep the children away. When there's an Indian of Sakana, huh. so you you're allowed to hint to it. So. So no Dr. Stein's uh, uh, terror is that it's an Indian of Sakana to have to have Amy Yaseira to have extra because we just said it could be Shvichas Daman. Galita Shvichas Daman. Yeah, it doesn't mean that. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. How, how did we get into all this? Well, we started out with some concern about the credibility of this individual. Okay. I'll tell you what happened. What happened was Rav Yasser says that uh, a get coming from Bavel doesn't right. need the funny nechta, funny nechta. And then we started to argue with how great really is Rav Yasser. He doesn't write with uh, with the line, with sirtet on the thing. He said, oh no, he's very great. The Pilegash Begiva, Hashem quotes him. Pilegash Begiva, oh, a person should never put more fear in his house, any extra fear. It says, oh, one person did. His name was, uh, okay. Now, Marukva, Marukva sends to Rabbi Lazar, there's a lot of people there, uh, they're um, standing up against me. I can get rid of them. Marukva, I think, was the, 
I don't know, he wasn't the Reish Galusa, he was the head of the best, and I think. Was he a Reish Galusa? The when it says Maruk, but does that mean he was a Reish Galusa? He is a he is a I think it could be Maruk for means that he was the Reish Galusa. He was he was the head of the court also. I think Shmuel was by him. Shmuel, I think, was his teacher, but he was Shmuel wasn't the head of the court, Shmuel was the head of the yeshiva. Um no, I think Mar means uh, some, uh, is the title itself uh, before a name. So Maruk for Sam Sherbalas, there's people that are bothering me. I can get rid of them by giving them over to the government. He says, uh, Mahu, what should I do? So Sirtit Vikasavle, he put Sirtis, so we're getting into this because he's doing Sirtit. He put a Rabalazar put uh, lines on the paper Vikasavle, he wrote him, Amarti, I say. Eshmera Durachai, I'll guard my way, Mechatebel Ashani from sinning with my mouth. Eshmera, I'll guard Lefi Machsaim to put a muscle on over my mouth. Vaidrashal Negdi, while the wicked is still here, which, which uh, he translates to mean Afal P, Shirashal Negdi, even though the wicked person is here, Eshmer Lefi Machsaim, I'm still going to guard my, my, my mouth. They, they have this Machsaim uh, Lefi, something like that. It's a Lashon Hara campaign, you know, you don't, not to say Lashon Hara, they call it Machsim Lafi, to put a muzzle on your mouth. He's saying not to inform, just to leave it alone. We'll see in a second. Shalach Lei, Sir Marukva sends back, Komitsar Tuva, they're really bothering me. I can't, uh, I can't, um, I, I can't stand it, right? Shalach Lei, he sends him back, Rabbi Lazar sends him back, Doim la Hashem v'eschel Eloi. Be, be silent for Hashem, and v'eschel Eloi actually means, and wait patiently. But the Gemara learns it, Doim la Hashem, be silent to Hashem, v'hu yapilam l'cha chalalam chalalam, and Hashem will make them slain as in, uh, you know, uh, corpses, like a chalalam, like a corpse. Hashkim v'harif aleim l'beisem edashvim kalim aleim. There's a famous Gemara. But the Rebbe, the Rebbe said this, you know, when his uh, enemies and different things, he told the, the yeshiva bachim, they should come early to learn and they should stay late. Hashkin Baharif, come early and stay late. Behem kalim, the enemies will disappear on their own. Hadavar yasim mipi Rabbalazar, the words came out of Rabbalazar, and asnu le geniva b'kailar, and geniva was taken away in a collar. That means a, uh, he was arrested. Geniva is actually one of the Amiraim, was a great sage. But apparently he was also uh, um, had some conflicts with the. So anyway, that's the story over here. But you find, we find Geneva in other places, amongst the early Amiraim. Um, we find Geneva. I think Rav Shmuel is is around. Sholchu leil Marukva. They asked Marukva Zimra Minolan Daser. How do you know you're not allowed to sing nowadays? Sirtit v'kasav lahu. He made. He wrote a. He put the. It on the document, he made a uh, scored the, the paper and he said, Al Do not rejoice, Israel, um, to the extent of uh, such happiness amongst the nations. Kamara says, Okay, that's your source that you're not allowed to sing nowadays. Why doesn't he send from the Gemara that we just finished in Saita? It says, We're amongst song, you shouldn't drink wine. And um, bitter is the hard drink to those that drink it. Gemara says, from that I would have thought that's talking about musical instruments. shari, <laughs> but to sing with the mouth, that's permissible. Kamashmalan, that even to sing with the mouth is prohibited. This is where that, that strict opinion goes. We mentioned in, when we're learning Saita that there is a strict opinion that holds that you're not allowed to have any music nowadays. What's the hat there? Everyone's now, it's already placing the egg ball. Everyone's turning on their uh, tape recorders, not their own tape recorders, their music things. Um, <laughs> what does your Gamora read? Does it read Gil Be'amim or Ka'amim? I have Be'amim. It means Altismach Yisrael El Gil. Do not rejoice Israel to the extent of uh, uh, Gil, is like an even more than just rejoicing. My Gomorrah changes it to be Ka'amim. I, I, I looked up the Pasuk. I thought it said Bi'amim, amongst the nations. Now my, my Gomorrah adds a little printer's thing uh -huh. in here. 
How, how does your say? Because you say, I'm, I mean, it's a Pasuk, so I don't know how much we can play with it. Uh, yeah, Ba'amim. They have over here Ba'amim. They have over here Ba'amim. Which, which Gemara do you have? Are you using one of, like, uh, show me the, show me the Gemara. What is that? Your set, the red set? Oh, okay. I see, I see. Get a new one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just put a pencil, just put a pencil mark over there. I think you have to look it up. The, yeah, look at it. You have to look it up in Hosea and see if maybe there's two versions in Hosea because it's a Pasuk. Okay. Yeah, I have the same Gemara. It's just, uh, the you know, that's the same thing. Almost the same. Oh. Oh, the old Gemara. Oh. And which one is the correct one? Oh. It, the, the old version had Ka'amim and it was fixed to Ba'amim. Okay. Um, so basically what we are saying is that, um, that you're not supposed to listen to music, but the two heterim that there are to listen to music, one heter is that the music that we listen to is uh, Nagunim that are, that are inspiring us to serve Hashem, Sukkim and all of that. The other heter is that uh, people need it for their health, for their mental health. To a Okay. Um Huna Barnas Naravashi. Huna Barnas says to Ravashi, my dixiv, what's the meaning of the Pasa? Kina Vidimaina Vada after the Khurban, it's after the after Vespasian siege that they said that yeah. remember in sight though we said after a certain time, after the Sanhedrin stopped or something, they would stop Jerusalem is still in the West and only play only Quaker and Right. 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 In Yerushalayim, in Yerushalayim, they're strict about that. They only like one piece. Oh, really? Poiker yeah. means a drummer. They just have a drum. What's the meaning of the pasa? Kina v'dimayna v'ad ada. These are cities in Israel that the Jewish people conquered. Amalei, Masaf Sadar Tzishol Kachasha. What do you want? These are... Uh, these are cities in Israel. I don't know. You don't think I know that those are just names of cities? Like saying, what's uh, Miami, Aventura? What's the meaning of uh, Miami, Aventura, and uh, Dave? You know, so it's, I don't know what it means. It's, uh, that's the Indians. <laughs> uh, I think it's named yet. Uh -huh. So he says, you don't think I, I know that it's cities? Ella, Rav Gviya Margiza, Amr Batimer, Rav Gviya Margiza. He explained the names of these cities. He says, Kol Bakina. The first city was, the name was Kina. al Khavir, anyone that has some, like, jealousy of his friend, Vidoimim, but is silent. He has some hatred to his friend, and he's silent. So, anger against his friend. Sheikhan Adiyad, So, the one that, um, the Adada, the one that uh, dwells forever, will give him a judgment. That means, like, a good judgment. Because he was silent, which means that he uh, overcame his uh, anger. Okay, you're going to learn every name in, of the, in Tanakh, every name. What are you going to do with Tiklag, Umadmana, Vesansana? What are you going to do with those cities? You're going to learn those as well. You're going to also come up with something. You're right. If Rav Gvia from the city of Argiza was here, he would actually have a reason for this. Rachim says, yes. Anyone that has a complaint against his friend that he's taking his food away from him, and he's silent. The one that dwells in the sna in the bush is going to the sansana. It's going to do a judgment for him. That means he'll get his reward. How do you know that you're not allowed to make a uh, uh, a type of crown? On top of for a for a for a kala or for a a chosen. Amalei midar abanan. It's a rabbinic law. It says the tanan because it says in the Mishnah, but pulma shelas pesianus at the war that Vespasian held against uh, Israel against Yerushalayim. Gosar al ters chasanim aleiros. They made a decree against um, the crown that the chasanim would wear, and also against the drum. Iris is a type of drum. 
Adahachi, while this was being said, come Rav Huna Lafnuya, Rav Huna gets up to relieve himself, to use the bathroom. Amalei Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda was a student of Rav, of Rav Huna was there. He says, hey, Rav Chizda wouldn't have spoken while Rav Huna was there, but Rav Huna left. So he's, he starts to say, he says, Kruxiv, there's actually a Pasuk. It says, Kaya Mar Shem Alikim, Asra Mitznefes Varim Atara. So says Hashem, remove the Mitznefes, which is the hat, and lift up the crown. Zeis loy zeis, this, not this. Hashbala Hagve. Uh, the, those that are low lift up and those that are high lower down. What are you telling me about the hat and the crown? What does that have to do with one another? It says what it means is it's coming to tell you when the Kain Gadol is wearing his hat, that means the base of English is there then every person can wear a crown every groom can wear a crown there's no more uh, uh, hats the head of the Kain Gadol was called the Mitznefes. He's not wearing it, then the Stalka Atar Meresh Kaladam, then everyone else should take off their crowns. Adahachi Yasser Ravuna Ravuna returns from the bathroom, and Ashkechinu Davi Yasvi sees them sitting there. Amalei Holy Kim says, By God, Midr Abanan, all of this is Rabbinic law. Allah Chizda Shmach Bechastain Milach. Chizda is your name, and your words are, are beautiful. Chastain are, are very nice. Um, Ravina Ashkechei Lamar Bar Ravashi Davagadl Klil Lebrati. Ravina found Mar Bar Ravashi. This is the end of the Talmudic period that he was making a, a crown for his daughter. He was not making; he was growing the crown. No, Gadl means to grow or to braid. I'm not sure. Amalei, what does it say? He was braiding it. He was braiding that for his daughter. Amalei, like Savalei Mar, doesn't don't you hold Hashem Esnefes Harma Tari? You're not allowed to do this. There's no base of You're not supposed to be making crowns. Amalei, do me the kind of Gadl the Gabri Avo Benashi Loi. That's only by men, but not by women. Women are allowed to have crown. My zeis le zeis. What does it mean? This, not this. We're learning the pasuk. Darsh Rav Avira zimun amle mishmei the Ravami zimun am mishmei the Ravasi. Shosh Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu Yisrael Asmas Nevis Varamatara. When Hashem told the Jewish people, take off the hat of the kind Gadol and remove your crowns. Amar Malachi Asher Sliya Kadosh Baruch Hu. The angel said to Hashem, exactly where we're holding now. Rabbeinu Shleilam zeis lehem li Yisrael. Is this what you do for the Jewish people? They said, this is what you're going to do. They said Nasa before Nishma. It's the angels are telling Hashem, how could you destroy the base of English? No, not this. This is not so for the Jewish people. They, uh, they sinned. They put the, those that were low up high and they put the high down low and they put an a, a image in the Hechel. Okay, uh, we Messiah with Dover Tive. Okay, good day, everyone. It was stickers in Israel two years ago. Lashon Ara doesn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs>